The Presidential Records Act. What is the Presidential Records Act, or PRA? This little-known civil law may determine who will be president next year. The Presidential Records Act is an extremely powerful law for ex-presidents only. On the president's last day of office as they leave the White House, any classified documents at the president's home of any kind are the president's personal property. Trump advisor Peter Navarro threatened with contempt over presidential records. U.S. District Judge Colleen Collar Catelli handed down the decision after the court reviewed documents Navarro provided last October that he claimed were personal records. The court reviewed of the 50 documents Navarro handed over, including 16 that were ambiguous, including four journal entries. Covered records under the 1978 Presidential Records Act are those that are either created or received by covered employees in the course of assisting with the discharge of the president's official duties. The court filing said Navarro's status as a covered employee under the PRA is undisputed, as he served as an advisor to Trump throughout his presidency. Doesn't this sound familiar? Justice Department finds no classified documents in Biden's beach home, where agents located documents with classified materials from his time as vice president and senator, and also took possession of some of his handwritten notes. Oh, you mean like the four journal entries that Trump advisor Peter Navarro had? After the FBI raided his home of Mar-a-Lago for classified documents, Donald Trump reported for his Miami arraignment in the Department of Justice's classified documents case. Charging a former president of the United States under the Espionage Act of 1917 wasn't meant for this. An act for a crime so heinous that only the death penalty would do and threatening me with 400 years in prison for possessing my own presidential papers, which just about every other president has done, is one of the most outrageous and vicious legal theories ever put forward in an American court of law. The Espionage Act has been used to go after traitors and spies. It has nothing to do with a former president legally keeping his own documents. As president, the law that applies to this case is not the Espionage Act, but very simply the Presidential Records Act, which is not even mentioned in this ridiculous 44-page indictment. Under the Presidential Records Act, which is civil, not... Now you'll notice here the PBS NewsHour is editorializing as he's speaking, interpreting the Presidential Records Act for Donald Trump into something that it's not. This is not the job of PBS, and they're acting as Joe Biden's personal news service. Just ignore their little Chiron graphics and listen to the president outline what the Presidential Records Act gives a president. Criminal. I had every right to have these documents. The crucial legal precedent is laid out in the most important case ever on this subject known as the Clinton Sox case. You know what that means? After leaving the White House, Bill Clinton kept 79 audio tapes in his sock drawer. They included discussions of U.S. military involvement in Haiti, discussions of U.S. foreign policy, both defense and offense, against Cuba, recordings of President Clinton's conversations with all of the many foreign leaders at the time. Think of that. Sensitive facts about trade negotiations taken from presidential briefings, discussions with the Secretary of State about conflict in Bosnia, and much, much more. Very big stuff. Not only was Bill Clinton never even considered for criminal prosecution based on the tapes he took, but when he was sued for them, he won the case. Judge Amy Berman Jackson's decision states under the statutory scheme established by the Presidential Records Act, the decision to segregate personal materials from presidential records is made by the president during the president's term 
and in the President's sole discretion. Be surprised to hear that, aren't you? Any normal administration, even an opposing one, would consider that to be the end. Was Donald Trump telling the truth about the PRA? You can fact check him yourself by Googling Clinton Sox case, Judicial Watch. Judicial Watch Incorporated, Plaintiff vs. National Archives and Records Administration, or NARA, Defendant. Judge Amy Berman Jackson, Presiding. Plaintiff, Judicial Watch, asked the court to declare audio tapes created by former President William Jefferson Clinton during the Clinton administration to be presidential records under the Presidential Records Act, PRA, and to order Defendant, the National Archives, to assume custody and control of them and deposit them in the Clinton Presidential Library. Here's what Judge Jackson ruled. The court will grant the motion to dismiss because plaintiff's claim is not redressable. The National Archives does not have the authority to designate materials as presidential records. NARA does not have the tapes in question and NARA lacks any right, duty, or means to seize control of them. This proves that the National Archivist had no legal right to order the FBI to raid President Donald Trump's home of Mar-a-Lago. That was illegal against the law because it was already settled federal law that NARA, the National Archives, had no right to determine for themselves what was classified or unclassified and what was presidential property and not presidential property. The deputy archivist could not and did not make a classification decision that can be challenged here. In the court's view, plaintiff reads too much into this statement. Under the statutory scheme established by the Presidential Records Act, the decision to segregate personal materials from presidential records is made by the president during the president's term and in his sole discretion. Folks, that's the end of this. The Presidential Records Act clearly shows that Donald Trump's home should never have been raided by the FBI at Mar-a-Lago, and Donald Trump should have never been indicted in Miami for mishandling classified documents. The Presidential Records Act does not confer any mandatory or even discretionary authority on the archivist to classify records. Under the statute, this responsibility is left solely to the president. Ultimately, plaintiff conceded that even an order deeming the materials to be presidential records and directing the defendant, Bill Clinton, to make an effort to retrieve them would not bind the former president to produce them. This is the power of the PRA, the Presidential Records Act. Even if every official in Washington, D.C., ordered Bill Clinton to turn over these records, he could ignore them because the PRA gives him the sole discretion to make such a determination. Certainly not a bureaucrat's job in the National Archives to override the wishes of a former president. That's the power of the Presidential Records Act. The court is unable to redress plaintiff's claim. Accordingly, the court will grant defendant's motion, the National Archivist, to dismiss. So what does this have to do with Peter Navarro's case? This is being prosecuted by President Biden's Department of Justice. They are using the Presidential Records Act to punish a member of Trump's staff, while at the same time, the same Biden Department of Justice is ignoring the Presidential Records Act in order to charge Trump and put him in prison under the Espionage Act. That is the power of a weaponized, politicized executive branch. Thank you.